So if you could just talk a little bit about sort of what the, the Star Trek philosophy is and kind of how it relates to all the Think Trek activities that are going on this year. Sure, sure. I, I, I can ramble on a little bit about that. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, so the, the, the primary philosophy behind Star Trek, what my father really started with is, is what we call the Idic philosophy. IDIC stands for infinite diversity from infinite combinations. And it is the, uh, the genuine appreciation of all things that are unique and different. And it, it's, uh, it, it's, 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 it's not really just about things that look different. It, it's more about things that, well, might seem different and talk different. The Enterprise crew wasn't out traveling the galaxy trying to find aliens that looked weird. They wanted to find intelligent species from other planets that simply had a unique and different perspective on the universe. We as a species at that point had come together. We realized that we shouldn't fear the difference between us, that it was those differences that allowed us to evolve and grow intellectually. So going out into the universe was the next best thing. We could find creatures that could teach us about the universe and, and by, by, incorporating and appreciating things that are different that doesn't mean agreeing with them necessarily that just means we can grow we can evolve intellectually by simply hearing things that we haven't thought of before some of it we might take pieces of and incorporate into our own knowledge and some of it we might say well no that that doesn't work for us but it is it is the critical um, ideology behind star trek that really makes it uh, 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 makes it something that's lasted 55 years. Um, and, and that's what we're really trying to do with uh, honoring my father's 100th birthday. It's not about simply having a birthday party for a man who's been passed on for 25 years. Now, he's my father and I love him dearly. And so, yes, I do want to celebrate his life. In fact, he had a very incredible life before Star Trek, being a World War II pilot, being a transcontinental airline pilot being an officer with the LAPD, and then creating Star Trek. So I do want to talk about his life, um, but I want to do it in the context of this life gave him tremendous perspective. It allowed him to see the best of humanity and the worst. And I think this is really what gave him the vision of Star Trek. This is what allowed him to see what we might be someday. And that's what he put into his characters in a story. So the campaigns we're doing, Think Trek, Talk Trek, Be Trek, Make Trek, those all Dance in some Trek. way, yeah, <laughs> focus <laughs> on that ideology. And uh, that's, that's, that's the overall, and I'm happy to go into any detail uh, beyond that. I just don't want to talk your ear off too much. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I think that's the only way you grow is by listening to other perspectives think about them you don't have to agree with them like you said but yeah. at least have a conversation a back and forth and be willing to hear different ideas outside of your own otherwise you're just going to be in the same spot forever which is a challenge to do especially when ideas are counter to yours and listen i can sit here and say this to you as i can say to anyone else i i, I don't do it all the time it's very easy for me to want to live in my bubble, as opposed to hearing someone say the exact opposite of what I want to hear. Um, I know intellectually that will help me grow to put myself in that situation, but it is a difficult and exhausting thing to do. Uh, there's many levels in between. We don't always have to be hearing someone who's exactly counter to what we uh, believe, but it's, it's always a challenge, yeah. but we have to do it. We have, we have to, to have the uncomfortable conversations. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, besides the OG Star Trek show, do you have a favorite out of all the iterations that have been since the 60s? You know, I, I do. I mean, I was, uh, I was born in 74, so I was pretty much brought up with the next generation. And so that is my, that is my comfort show. That is my go-to. That is the enterprise I would be more than happy to serve on because... I believe the leadership qualities that Picard showed as opposed to Kirk 
Um, you know, even though it may not be as exciting and dramatic for television to have a captain who always wants to find a diplomatic way to solve a problem, um, I believe in that leadership style, the kind of leadership style where someone says, you do what I say because I am your superior or else, uh, or else you will be punished. I do not believe in that at all as a leadership style. Um, there, there may be times in, in, in military where it, it works. And, and listen, I'm not gonna get into the details on that. I'm just saying as a volunteer, anything, I need someone who I believe in and trust and who values my point of view, who values my skill. If I'm an officer on the bridge and I have a particular skill in a certain area, um, I, 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 just, I just want to be able to do my job, which is to convey the information that I have. And that's what a good captain does, listens to each person on the bridge, each person in their department, the head of departments, and then makes an informed decision. That's why I love Star Trek Next Generation. You don't have that as much in the other shows until right. second season of Discovery, when Anson Mount came on board as, as Pike, and really came on with a humble uh, 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 personality and said, we are a team. Um, so that just, ma that makes me think of a, a question I hadn't considered before, please. but that's kind of seems like Picard is kind of the opposite end of the scale from Kirk. Yeah. And so yeah. I'm wondering, is that character, was that character sort of the everyman who was learning from everybody else, kind of like you could see yourself in his shoes? Um, well, I mean, personally, I respect Picard more than I do Kirk. But what's, what's fascinating is these are uh, very, I think, analogous to who my father was at that time. You know, uh, 25 years before The Next Generation, we had a swashbuckling Captain Kirk who mm -hmm. still did the right thing but wasn't afraid to get into a fist fight and kiss the girl in the end. I'm yeah. not saying my father got into fist fights and ki ki kiss the girl, <laughs> but you know, my father was younger, more brash. Uh, I'm sure he got the girl in the end half the time as well. Uh, but as he aged 25 years, I think he understood the, the concept of empathy, trying to understand the other point of view, trying to really uh, uh, internalize it and trying to find a peaceful solution at all costs, no matter what, even if it didn't work the first time, never give up on finding the peaceful solution. And uh, that, that, that's wisdom, that's age, that's maturity. And uh, humanity is, 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 needs to get there. Yeah. So I got a question from one of my colleagues at Flickering Myth. Yeah, they wanted to know: um, Are we ever going to see a remake or a revamp of the Earth Final Conflict series? Oh wow! You know, I I, I don't know. Um, that series had such uh, potential, and I only say potential. It went five seasons, but it had a number of incarnations and casting changes and stuff like that. Um, there there are a number of gem episodes that you can watch and say, oh. This would have been cool. I can see where they were going and I'm not saying it wasn't good, but listen, as a Roddenberry, I, 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 I'm very critical and maybe even overly critical. Um, I would love to see that show redone. I think it still needs another 10 plus years at least before it's redone um, uh, because it wasn't a bad show. In fact, the acting was su superb. Uh, and, and many of the stories in the early seasons were great. Um, well, but, Majel was in the first couple of seasons, right? Yes, yes, Dr. Bellman. Um, she was phenomenal. So uh, I, I, maybe one day someone will do it. You know, it's not an unusual concept. My father had a script uh, called, it was actually, before it was called that, it was called uh, uh, Earth, uh, Earth uh, shoot. Battleground Battle, Earth. Battleground Earth. And then the movie came out. <laughs> well, and then the movie from Scientology called Battlefield terrible, terrible came movie. out. And uh, yeah. we felt at the time it was a good idea to stay as far away from that as possible. So there was a name change. Yeah. And of course, the original story changed quite a bit. So it was a uh, conglomerate of many different ideas. Um, yeah. 
but it was still very unique. And even uh, remember, I'm going into tangents here. We don't have to. V V was a very similar concept. And so, <laughs> oh, I anyhow. love that show. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. sorry, uh, you can get cool. me going on that stuff for a while. <laughs> no worries. No Short worries. Answer is no. Not, nothing's planned anytime soon. <laughs> gotcha. Um, how much do you hang out with the other Star Trek family? I know that you had done a watch party with Adam Nimoy um, for that documentary. Um, you know, are you hanging out with anybody? Like you know, when you say the other cast? Star Trek family, you mean other members, family members? Of yeah, cast? like like George Takai or you know any of the the cast from the original show or their uh, their family members. You know, like Adam I, see, I see most of them at Star Trek related events, uh, and and uh, I, I it's not that I don't hang out with them anywhere else but i mean i guess it is we don't have anything against each other we're, we're just not <laughs> super close and and we do different things and we have our own lives um uh the the other siblings of the actors i i, I know fairly well and we're good friends um but we're married we've got kids we live in different parts of the country we've got lives uh so That's it's like usually star, star trek, trek yeah. events that bring us together yeah cool I've got two yeah. more questions for you and then no worries um so what what's the favorite question you've been asked so far on this particular press tour and what's the answer to it i have had a number of favorite questions and this is not you asked or really, or do you do you remember what your favorite question is rob well no i i'd like to hear what you're going to say because mine's not going to be that exciting but <laughs> No, I remember someone asked where you would be without Star Trek, but there wasn't necessarily an answer to that. Oh, well, it was, yeah, because it was such a unique question. It was, it was sort of like if Star Trek had been the failure in 1969 and never gotten back on the air, where do you think you'd be today? And I was just um, flabbergasted wow. by that because, I mean, it's a, it's a great question, but I just could not answer it because there's, there's so many variables and chaos that would happen between now and then, uh, my answer was I would probably be a, a lawnmower repairman, I guess. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> Use car salesman. <laughs> any, any answer would be as good as any other. I could also be an astronaut. You know, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, what relationship would I have had with my father if he wasn't working on the next generation? Would it have been, you know, we were distant. I mean, I, I, he came home every night, but I was a rebellious teenager. Uh, could it have been, you know, there was... There's yeah. a butterfly effect of, of scenarios we can, we can throw there. <laughs> so um, the answer that I'd like to give you, though, is uh, two people have asked me, um, uh, it, what would you like people do? What would you like people to do to honor your father's birthday? Is there something that you'd like them to do? And it's a very, very simple answer. With, with everything that I've been saying about empathy and idic and compassion and being forward thinking and really trying to make this world a better place, let's choose that one day. And, and I'll preface this again by saying, there's billions of great people on this planet who do great things every day. But if we had to make a thing of it, let's say on that day, we all do something great for someone else. Mm. It's, it's, it, listen, That's I wish cool. it was more exciting than that. But that, if no. everyone followed that, we would have a pretty freaking amazing day, I bet. And yeah. hopefully in the future, we might make it two days a year. And then go I love there. it. Cool. So, final question for you uh, What is one question that you have not been asked that you wish people would ask you? Well, now you're giving me the hardest questions. <laughs> um, you know, I've, I mean, I, 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 I really love talking about Idik. I love talking about my father being a forward thinker. Uh, can I just answer that one? Because I, I don't, I don't want to leave you with an I don't know. Yeah. Uh, and maybe while I'm talking about- I, I, I like to- Basically, it's giving you the opportunity to kind of talk about something that you wanted to get out there on the press tour that maybe you hadn't been asked the right question about to be able to get that out there. 
no, I really appreciate it. And tomorrow I'll probably think of it and be like, damn, that was it. Um, <laughs> but I, I think Send me a video addendum. No, no kidding. No kidding. I, 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 <laughs> if, it, if it does happen, I will record it and send it to you for sure. Uh, awesome. If I can just talk about, and this is more of a, the, the uh, God, I don't want to call it preachiness. People ask, you know, how my father came up with Star Trek. And I kind of talked a little bit about this already, but my father had the incredible ability to, I think, intellectually live 50 or 100 years in the future because it's so interesting if you go back 50 or 100 years and you think back then granted we weren't around back then but we get some of the mentality and mindset what was so absurd offensive and and blasphemous back then that is commonplace today you know what sorts of things whether it has to do with race religion politics culture you name it now let's jump ahead a hundred years. What is so ridiculous, blasphemous, offensive thing? If someone said to you, you'd say you're out of your freaking mind. That I'm pretty sure a hundred years from now will be commonplace. I love that thinking. And my father lived in that when it came to social issues. He was a hundred years ahead thinking about race, religion, politics, all this sort of stuff. He would sit in a room with his peers and not just to be sensational and not just for shock value, but he would make a statement. They'd be talking about just say drugs, for example. And he would say, why not legalize all drugs? It's not because my father wanted all drugs legalized because he wanted to put people in the position of having to think about that, really critically think about what are the pros and cons and why not? And, and there are probably plenty of reasons why not. But I, I love that sort of opportunity for discussion. And we now live in such a society where you can be canceled and criticized and everyone's so judgmental that very few of us, I'm sure there are plenty, are, are able to have that conversation. And I understand there is a right time and a wrong time and a right way and a wrong way to have that conversation. But still, it, it is so uh, it is so frowned upon and so many people are afraid of being criticized and canceled uh, and, and there's plenty who aren't and, and, and thanks for them. But I, I, we need to get back to a time where we can have more of that open, critical, but arguably crazy discussion when it comes to sex, government, religion, marriage, politics. What if we abolish all government? I don't think we should, but let's have the discussion. What if? You know? Um, yeah. But if I if I went out there on the internet and put that, you know, I mean, it, it would, You'd be, it would be crazy. <laughs> you know, and one of the great here, okay, here's something that we didn't talk about. See, I knew this would lead to something, and I can't make it too long. I think, but um, you know, there there uh, there was Star Trek did these things where they went to planets where terrible things were happening. Um, Next generation, we interviewed a writer that for my documentary Trek Nation who said that uh, my, my father always was kind of cutting down their ideas. And uh, they, they said, uh, you know, if, if they came to a planet and Hitler was throwing people into ovens, that my father would say, uh, no, we can't interfere. It's the prime directive. The whole concept of, pri of the prime interrupt is non-interference. And having a discussion like that, I mean, it is, it is a crazy one to have, but do you let a civilization learn from its own mistakes as horrific as they might be, or do you intervene? And I have gone back and forth on this one my whole life. Um, as horrible as it is, uh, I believe if you came to a planet where there was mass genocide going on, Right now, part of me feels like you let it happen. But now I just feel like I just said, hi, I'm Rod Roddenberry. I support mass genocide. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm saying. I, I am saying if you start stepping in and changing things for an evolving civilization, an evolving society, they are not going to learn from themselves. Right. You're telling them what's right. You're telling them what's, learning right, what's right. And they will not learn it. And so having these kinds of conversations are phenomenal. Mm. It's just, it's just hard to have them these days because yeah. like I said, if I say that to the wrong person, 
guess what the headline on the internet will be? And I'm sure I, I'm sure right now everyone's freaking out that that I just said this, but uh, I, I I hope you uh, position it uh, not as crudely as I said. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, that's what I got. See me yes. up, Scotty. Yes. Thank I'm you, out. Ty. I'm out too. <laughs> Live long and prosper. All right.